So, this is a meeting of the City Council Finance Committee, and it's also a public hearing for the mayor to present his capital plan for the next fiscal year. Uh, this meeting was posted as a Finance Committee meeting, but also as a City Council meeting, and uh, there I guess we only have one city councilor, Ryan O'Donnell, who's here that's not on, fi on finance, but all councilors here are able to participate in the discussion because it's a duly posted meeting. So. And the only thing on the agenda is the mayor's presentation of his capital plan, and there'll be no votes taken at this meeting uh, other than for finance to recommend it to council. And you know, that's all we'd ever vote on here. So, I hope there's more than just me presenting it because it's actually a public hearing. Yeah, it's a right. public hearing. I'm assuming you, you and uh, Susan might both. Okay, good. Yeah, just like as I. Yes, yeah. you're both. Theoretically, I. Would, yeah, theoretically you. You're just, both presenting. Have and, a public hearing on it. And yeah, I and then hopefully at some point we have no members of the public present at this point in time. Okay. Okay, we have the members of the finance committee and Councilor O'Donnell, the mayor, and Susan Wright, the finance director. That's and, and of course Pam. So, with no further ado, okay. the so Mayor's I'll, Capital. I'll be the first speaker at the public hearing. Um, okay, um, so uh, you obviously all received a copy of the Capital Improvement Program. Um, and again, this is in accordance with our new charter. Um, the the uh, Mayor is required every year to submit to the City Council um, by, date, by that date certain. Oh, uh, can, can I interrupt you? Sure. We should probably, as finance, vote to open the public hearing because this is more than just our meeting. So, do I have a motion? And so, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, with that technicality out of the way. Okay. Back. So, again, just to review, um, this is uh, a capital program that I've created for fiscal year 2016 to 2020. Uh, this is pursuant to Article 7, Section 7 5 of the City Charter, and I've submitted it to you for a public hearing and then uh, pursuant to the charter, you're required to adopt it no later than June 1st of each uh, of each year. Um, uh, as outlined in the charter, it provides a general summary of contents. It provides you with a list of all capital improvements that we would propose to be undertaken during the next five years with the supporting information. Um, and principally, that supporting information is the uh, what we call the CIP or Capital Improvement Program form that we require each department to submit um, for each project, which which answers all of the various questions about cost estimates, um, uh, uh, purpose, um, you know, estimated costs of, of operating, etc. Um, and uh, as I always like to remind you, but also the public, that um, adoption of this program does not actually um, constitute um, spending or borrowing authorization for those items. Um, it merely shows that the city is being prudent and is putting together a five-year program in, in terms of assessing its um, capital needs. I will, in fact, either be coming forward um, as part of the FY16 budget for the lion's share of the projects, or as I've indicated in here, um, there may be projects that we bring forward sooner um, either because, we, you know, in the case of the school department, we often want to get them contracted and bid out so that the work can happen over the summer when the schools are closed, um, which would not be possible if we had to wait until July 1st to sign contracts and do that. Or, as some of the, as the counselors may know, we've even brought forward uh, a select of four projects that we are hoping to get borrowing authorization for earlier because we intend to bond those projects and so we want to get out onto the bond market as soon as possible. So um, there's a provided in here a definition of capital improvements which you know generally are things like everything from buildings to uh, major equipment uh, to renovation projects um, uh, and, uh, and so the program process itself um, consisted of a Capital Improvement Program Committee, um, which serves advi as advisory to the mayor. Um, the, the makeup of that is described in on page two of the document. They actually had meetings with all of the various departments. Uh, actually, uh, your city council representative, uh, Councilor Murphy, actually served as the chair of that committee this year. 
Um, and uh, they all submitted their various requests. The committee met, heard from them, and then the committee uh, ranked all of the projects um, and gave them sort of a ranking, either a um, sort of urgent, high priority to medium to, to lower priority, sort of into three main categories. Then those were all submitted uh, to the mayor. Uh, obviously the finance director works very closely as part of that process. And then we um, are required to try to figure out, uh, looking out over the next five years, looking at our uh, debt capacity, looking at um, you know, the percentage of our budget that we want to dedicate to uh, capital expenditures. Um, we have to come up with a plan um, and try to fit each, uh, as many of those projects as we can into that five-year window. Um, and you'll note that there are several projects, as there were last year, that we don't have a place for on the five-year capital plan. We've called them out at the end of the document. They're sort of out there, uh, but we don't currently have the, the fiscal capacity um, to be able to work those in. Um, again, because this is always a rolling process where every year we're going to be doing this, you'll see um, some items might move up in priority, some items may come off that list and come onto the list, new projects that, you, that aren't even here may come into it, so it's a fluid document that's always, um, always in motion. The, uh, we have provided you with some information on page three that sort of talks about um, some of the um, some of the fiscal principles that we have tried to adhere to. On page four, we provide the various funding sources that we hope to um, fund this from. Uh, uh, one part of that is cash capital. That's capital money that we put in the actual budget. And we are hoping, our plan has been to slowly increase how much we add um, in that budget each fiscal year. Last year was 250. This year, our target is we're looking at 265, and we hope to try to increase that. Um, free cash each year, uh, mayors uh, will typically uh, take a look at the free cash balance and will dedicate a certain amount of free cash uh, to capital projects because capital projects are the quintessential um, item. We were just at the deal, uh, just at the uh, conference that Senator Rosenberg held this uh, weekend. And the DORF was really harping a lot on free cash and how you really want to use it for one-time expenditure. So capital purchases are, are exactly the kinds of things as opposed to a position or some other kind of recurring budget item. So a certain amount will come from free cash. Um, in this budget, we're targeting to use approximately $1,040 from free cash as the target for FY16. Um, and then you can see in the plan that we actually go um, to 500,000 a year after that. We want to be prudent in the out years because you can never guarantee how much free cash you're going to have. So we want to be prudent. Um, obviously that can get adjusted from year to year. Capital stabilization, um, which as you know, we've made a major effort to try to build that fund up. I know we had a discussion about that during the capital uh, program last year. Um, and we are, um, we are now uh, getting that up to a point where, um, and again, we've mentioned this in our principles in the past, that once we get it to 2.5% of the general fund budget, then our plan has been to try to start drawing from capital stabilization to fund the capital improvement project, uh, the capital improvement program, I should say. So uh, we currently got the balance of uh, a little over 2.2 million. Um, and so, as you'll note in the plan, you'll see that in FY16, we do in fact begin drawing a small amount from capital stabilization to help fund um, those projects. Uh, the, um, on, on page five, there's kind of a summary of that capital stabilization fund, which shows you the growth of that fund over time and our efforts to try to rebuild that. Um, and you can also, uh, see our projections uh, using the formula of trying to keep it at 2.5% um, and also assuming that we're going to continue to make regular not only contributions as part of our appropriation budget each year, but as has also been our practice when free cash is certified each year, you may recall that we've been coming forward and always trying to put um, some, some portion of it into capital stabilization and into stabilization, which we did earlier, um, earlier this spring. So that sort of gives you the projections there. 
Um, and then the various other funds that we that we fund these uh, projects from, everything from the parking with receipts reserved for appropriation to the various revolving funds to the CPA, because some of the projects um, may rely on CPA funding. Uh, reprogram funds, oftentimes there will be capital projects that either uh, were uh, Either, uh, repro you know, either didn't actually end up happening for some reason or not all the funds were expended. We want to try to close out those projects after a certain period of time and we want to reprogram the funds. Enterprise funds, uh, which would be funds that would be paid for obviously out of our three, uh, well four actually, but primarily in this, in this plan, uh, three uh, enterprise funds, water, sewer, and stormwater. Um, and uh, you will see that we will be, um, we have a little typo in here we'll have to fix, but that's that could be fixed. Uh, the, um, but I will be coming forward to you in April to discuss the uh, setting of the water and sewer rates, um, and that actually will be the basis for the funding for the capital, largely for the capital projects that are part of the water and sewer enterprise funds. Um, there's also uh, explanation here about the bonding and borrowing uh, process and, and how what, what projects we intend to use for that. Um, you also have a, a chart on page seven, which gives you a rundown of the debt uh, service over the uh, five years, um, including uh, breaking it down by debt excluded, levy limit, um, some of the MSBA reimbursements for school projects, and then uh, other sources, which is largely CPA, uh, for some of the longer term projects, primarily the library and uh, Florence Fields that, that were bonded. Um, and then you can see the breakdown for the uh, for the enterprise funds. When you get to the um, when you get to the uh, there's one final piece at the start of page eight, which I think I already talked to you about, uh, which is this concept of extraordinary maintenance for the schools um, and the distinction that the um, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education makes about extraordinary maintenance versus capital maintenance. Um, so you know that I already came forward, for example, and sought your approval for funding of several of the projects that were requested by Smith Vocational um, Agricultural High School that fit that, that category of extraordinary maintenance. Um, so you may see some projects that uh, are requested under capital, but we may actually fund them out of a general fund uh, budget as part of extraordinary maintenance. So all told, uh, as is summarized on page eight, uh, the capital improvement program consists of a total of 77 projects, uh, which total $22,161,290, programmed out over the next five fiscal years. Uh, uh, there's a breakdown by each department um, that tells you, for example, uh, central services has central services proper, which is sort of the general city facilities, has 14 projects and it gives you the dollar amount. And then there's central services parking because they um, manage all of the parking facilities and we tend to segregate that because it's paid for out of, uh, out of receipts reserved for parking. And then NPS because uh, central services is the maintenance arm for the North Anthem Public Schools. And then you've got fire, IT, uh, planning, police, DPW, uh, senior services, and the building uh, department. Uh, then when you move into page nine, it gives you um, sort of an overview um, over the five-year period, um, and it gives you a breakdown of uh, the various funding sources that will be funding, uh, which we project would fund um, each one of those fiscal years, and you can sort of see as you go down the list, it's everything from that, that general fund cash capital that I mentioned uh, to the receipts reserved for parking. Um, you'll note there's even the use of some re receipts reserved for the sale of land, which we can talk about, and then all the other um, enterprise fund sources. Uh, we don't have a lot of reprogrammed funds. We have a couple of small projects that are being re reprogrammed as part of 2016 and 27. Then when you go to Appendix A, which is the first appendix, that actually gives you a listing, um, uh, a full listing uh, for the five year span. And it's broken down by department alphabetically. Um, so you see building department, uh, for example, uh, the very first item on the, on the plan um, is an electric vehicle for electrical and plumbing inspections. This is actually gonna be a used vehicle. It's not a new vehicle. Um, and the, we have a, 
We have a, um, I think we have an old Ford Explorer, which the joke around the inspections office is it's often safer to walk to the inspection because they're not sure if they'll make it back if they take the Explorer, because um, it's kind of on its last leg. So um, we were, were trying to find a cost-effective way to get them a new vehicle, and given the amount of around town miles they do, to try to move toward an electric vehicle. So that's just an example. Um, and then you can see down the line central services, um, and you can follow along in each of the graph to see where we've programmed in um, each of the various uh, projects as you go through. Um, in terms of ones that I would highlight, um, obviously one of the big ones, and you'll be asked to vote on this very shortly, we're trying to get this one um, front loaded as part of the bonding, is a project uh, to basically replace all 2,000 plus of our city-owned streetlights and retrofit them with LED fixtures. Um, this is a program which has just now become available to Northampton uh, because of recent changes in the fee tariffs by National Grid. Many of our neighbor uh, sister cities and towns who are in Wilmico and NSTAR and some of the other communities have long, have already done this. Um, and it's really kind of a no-brainer, and I talked to many of my mayors in other cities who've done it because basically not only does it save you energy, but it pay basically pays for itself because of the energy savings. So, um, you know, we're proposing that it will um, it'll save us on the order, I think, about $120,000 a year in energy savings, and that savings will help, help us pay for the debt service, pay for the bonding on the... Um, on the project, including the maintenance and ongoing things. And obviously it fits in with our, with a lot of our other sustainability um, efforts around town. They're lower maintenance, um, better quality light. So that's one of our bigger projects that I would highlight. Um, you'll notice that we've got, um, you know, we, we have uh, a few roof projects in the city, um, including some work that has to be done on the Memorial Hall roof. Um, generally, we try to prioritize any kinds of projects that deal with the building, um, you know, with the exterior of any of our buildings, the building envelope where it could be compromised um, uh, by, primarily by water or snow because we want to make sure we head off any longer term uh, uh, costs. You'll see in the parking section, we're doing continuing the multi-year plan that Central Services has implemented in terms of uh, taking care of the garage and taking care of some of the uh, maintenance projects that have to happen to the garage, including the drainage system and uh, some more of the structural repairs that we've been spacing out over several years. Um, senior services, this is a somewhat significant one. Um, they have been trying for several years uh, to really um, uh, sort of build out their transportation services um, and they want to be able, their goal has been to have two wheelchair lift vans that they can use um, to be able to pick up seniors, uh, bring them to medical appointments, et cetera, et cetera. We have, a, we have an existing van uh, that's in very um, rough shape uh, and, uh, and has lots of maintenance needs. So you may know that they've been doing fundraising to buy a, it's called the Kick the Tires campaign. So they've been doing a private fundraising campaign to try to buy a wheelchair van. And so my goal is, and what I've said to the senior services and I've met with the Council on Aging, is that the city wants to kind of make a commitment to that. So we're proposing to fund one of those vans out of the capital program to kind of match the one that they're trying to fund through uh, their various capital campaigns and other things that they're doing. So um, I know that senior services has been asking for one of these vans for several years. We haven't been able to fit it in the program, but we are going to put it in there uh, for 16, and hopefully um, their fundraising is coming down the home stretch, they hope. Uh, and so our, our hope is that they might complete it in time so that we can you know, buy two at the same time and perhaps even get a better price by buying, buying two. Um, uh, in the Department of Public Works, you'll notice um, you know, lots of work in terms of sewer line and water line replacement, the normal commitment, well, the commitments we're renewing to sidewalks and traffic calming. Um, street resurfacing is one that I'll highlight. That's another one that we're bringing forward an order on. Um, originally in last year's plan, uh, we had done, the plan had sort of assumed that we would do um, 500,000 in year one, uh, then we would sort of skip a year 
and focus on other priorities and then do a million dollars in year three and sort of an every other ramping up. Um, given the fact that we have this large deferred maintenance and given the fact that uh, obviously this, is, uh, this has been a program that people have been clamoring for, we're kind of speeding that up and spreading it out. So we're actually committing, or in this program at least, committing to do 500,000 uh, this year, 500,000 next year, 500,000 in 2019, and then trying to ramp it up to 750,000 in, um, in the fourth year. The original plan, which we inherited from the previous administration, was trying to balance you know, buying equipment and trucks versus paving. Um, and we really feel that, the, obviously, the sooner you do the paving, the cheaper it ultimately is. And obviously, there's a great demand and a great backlog for the paving. So we're trying to do it uh, quickly and not, defer, not skip a year of adding our own funds to that. Um, and obviously, that would supplement Chapter 90 funds um, from the state. Uh, the other item I would note for you under the, um, under the DPW, a couple of important projects uh, that came about. We've obviously been having a discussion about whether or not the city can afford uh, a new DPW facility. Um, and I had put that off into uh, sort of the further out years of the, of the capital program uh, because uh, uh, when we came into office and that was one of the programs that was out there, we really couldn't figure out a way that we could put that, that project of that magnitude into our existing debt schedule. Um, and with an eye toward the fact that we are, it's probably going to be difficult even to stick, to keep, you know, to keep it where we think we have it now, which is in 19 or 20, um, we are gonna attempt to do some of the projects that we think are important. Um, for example, you'll note the citywide fuel depot, um, which had been part of the uh, sort of encompassed with the uh, facility project, we're going to do that now because the fuel, the fuel facility needs to be replaced. Um, we've kind of eked it along and eked it along, uh, but we really need to, um, to get that replaced. And so waiting to do it until we build a facility doesn't make a lot of sense, so we want to do that first. Another item that you'll notice is an equipment storage uh, building. Um, one of the big items, one of the big issues that has come up about the lack of a uh, modern large facility is the fact that so much of our equipment um, is sitting out in the elements and we're buying new trucks and we're buying new, uh, all kinds of new equipment and we don't have enough room to store it all in the existing barn. So in my discussions with uh, DPW about this, um, I asked them to look at some low cost alternatives um, that they could construct uh, a small sort of, not small, but a, a storage building of sorts that they could construct on their existing site that would allow us to put some of that equipment under cover. Some of you may remember we used to have some kind of lean-to uh, wooden buildings that we could tuck them under. Well, those leaned so much that they leaned right over and, and are gone. I mean, they were just totally um, decrepit. So, so we are proposing um, this uh, $160,000 equipment storage building, which could be constructed, and we're building it in a way so that in the future, if we do are able to proceed with the um, with the project, we could repurpose that building uh, to some other use. We potentially could even sell it, um, and so. Uh, but we really feel that we're getting to a point now where, as we're starting to really replace our rolling inventory and starting to buy these, you know, 500,000 plus. Uh, pieces of equipment, uh, we really can't have them stored out in the elements. We need to get them under cover. So, um, so this will help, I hope, um, take care of some of those immediate issues as we think this facility project may move out further into the future. Fire department, um, obviously, there's some um, there's some vehicle there's a vehicle replacement. Um, that's actually the command vehicle. When it says command vehicle, that's the deputy fire chief who's the shift commander on every, um, on every shift. Uh, so that's a vehicle that gets used uh, seven days a week, 365 year, days a year, 24 seven. Um, and whoever, whichever one of the four deputies is uh, the shift commander at that time, that's the vehicle that goes out with the engine crew um, on, in responding to calls. Um, we want to take the one that's a really high mileage one and kind of bump that uh, down the chain and, and get them um, a, a more reliable vehicle for, because those are literally for emergency response calls. 
Um, and then you'll see there's some other um, uh, smaller uh, pieces of equipment, uh, hoses and things like that, that they need some turnout gear replacement, but that's further out into the future. Um, and you'll see that we, um, this year in the 15 capital plan, we purchased a hybrid staff vehicle, which is going to be coming any day now, we hope. Um, and we're trying to, to phase out another old vehicle and move to another um, hybrid staff vehicle, but that's not till uh, 2019 in the plan. You know, we have the fire inspector and we have um, the fire inspector who basically goes out all around the city doing fire inspections, either at restaurants, commercial facilities, homes, um, and basically is out, you know, all day out and around the city. And we felt that we could use an electric vehicle for that, um, or at least a hybrid electric. So we actually um, have a hybrid electric that's on order that you approved as part of the FY15 plan. Um, and we wanna again, for these staff vehicles that are largely doing administrative duties around the city, we wanna to try to, in keeping with our commitment as a green community, we wanna to try to move to hybrid vehicles. You know they have a charging station at the police station. So for the hybrid electric vehicles, they have a way to be able to, um, to charge them. Uh, IT department, uh, we've got some, uh, some equipment replacement funds that we've spread out over time. Uh, we've also got some servers uh, that are gonna be needed in the police department that we've also worked into the IT budget. Um, public schools, you'll see um, a significant uh, number of projects in the public schools. Um, you'll note right away that there's a couple of the roof replacement projects. Those are the ones that you've approved uh, that are in conjunction with the MSBA program that we're getting you know, reimbursed by the state for a significant portion of. Um, uh, other items that are of significance, uh, they are really working hard uh, to build out their uh, Wi-Fi system um, at, the, um, at the schools, uh, particularly now that um, so much of their work, including testing, is ultimately going to be moving into an online environment. And so, so you'll notice that uh, we did some wireless work in last year's plan. In this year's plan, we're committing to uh, finish the wireless build out for Bridge Street, Jackson Street, and Ryan Road School, um, which is significant. That'll basically have all of our schools uh, fully wired and wireless. Um, and you know, <coughs> it's not really a cause for celebration because so many other schools around us, this has been done like years ago. And so we're really playing catch up um, on that. Uh, you'll, you'll note in the um, OPS uh, budget, we do have um, a small amount of funds that would be served as leveraging funds for some rail trail projects. And then we do have some funding in there for tax title purchases. These are, of course, the tax title purchases, which then pay off properties that are in tax title um, and get the funds back into the city. Um, coffers, so you know Wayne has come forward with a few of those over time, but he needs the seed money to be able to do that. Um, police department, you'll note that um, another uh, sort of policy change we're trying to implement this year. Um, over time, we uh, the police department has a, a very good, well-developed, actually re statewide recognized vehicle replacement program um, where they try to um, replace a certain number of their cruisers every year uh, so that they are constantly having uh, the needed turnover in their entire fleet um, so that we're not waiting 20 years and then having to try to replace you know 20 cruisers all at once. Um, in the past we had been funding um, those cruisers out some of them out of the general fund budget some of them out of the capital program because we really feel that Cruisers are kind of a standard piece of equipment for, uh, for a police department. We're actually, for the first time this year and going forward, we're taking those cruisers out of the capital plan and we're actually incorporating them into the police budget under other than ordinary maintenance, or OOM as it's called. Um, because if we, we really want to uh, sort of build in this commitment to making sure that our fleet is um, is up to date and that we're, we're doing the investments that we need. Um, and because it's something we're doing every year, it seems like it should really be a part, regular part of the city budget. I know that we are also, one of our goals is to do the same thing with regard to the fire rescue department. 
um, where uh, we are constantly having to replace our ambulances over time. Uh, again, we feel that in a fire EMS department, an ambulance is not an optional, it's not a, you know, that's a primary piece of equipment. Um, and so we're trying to also build in the ambulance replacement as an OOM item in the general fund budget um, as well. So, uh, so you won't see um, you won't see any cruisers in this uh, in this in this police budget. Um, and then again, if you look up at uh, up at fire rescue, um, you'll note that there are no um, uh, no ambulance replacements in the budget as well. Those will appear as part of the FY16 general fund budget proper for fire rescue. Um, and so that's kind of an overview of the highlights. And then as you go back into the book, you'll see that it's broken down by um, individual uh, fiscal year, you know, each fiscal year. And you can see that, um, you know, that each fiscal year gives you the breakdown. It tells you where we're proposing to fund each project from, what the sources are, uh, what the totals are. And then when you get to Appendix C, that's literally all of the request sheets for the for all 70 plus projects that are in this uh, budget uh, in this program rather and these are the ones that, that the capital improvement uh, committee actually reviewed and ranked um, and you can see uh, you know how they uh, how they how they were ranked you can see uh, the years that they're programmed for and there's a brief description of the actual items uh, that are involved um, and all the other uh, information that we try to include. So that's a basic overview, uh, albeit a long basic overview, but uh, you asked for it. Um, and so uh, I'm happy to uh, listen for any comments from the public or answer any questions people have. Obviously, um, you're not deliberating on this tonight, but if you have questions, I can certainly uh, try to answer any that you have. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to know that there are still no members of the public that have chosen to join us. So uh, here's where I normally call for public comments, but being no public, uh, that's not gonna be possible. So, councilor questions, councilor Mark. Mayor, I wanna thank you and the team for doing an excellent job on the capital uh, plan. I think the breakdown for every department is excellent. And this is on the website, correct? Yes, yes it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful actually showing the breakdown of the year that it will occur and and explaining exactly what is going to be bought so I think this is great and I would and I would also note you know for example um, if, you know for the public if people want to read it you know we mentioned the um, I mentioned for example the staff vehicle you know replacement that we need to try to replace and you know we, we have in there how many miles are on the current vehicle, what year it is, it gives actually more information so that people understand that, you know, when we say we're replacing a vehicle, you know, it's a 12 year old vehicle that's got over 150,000 miles on it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's um, that kind of information in the back of those CIP sheets. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, um, so I see that, so the turnout gear for the fire rescue is off, so that all falls under 2019? That's correct. And, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, and so I remember when, when the name was changed, there was this conversation about, um, you know, how the how the, the names would be changed mm -hmm. on the turnout gear. And so is that a reason that it's happening all at one time? I think it's based on the fact that the turnout gear has a, um, has a set lifespan on it when we replace it. I forget the, um, I don't know if we have that in there, the turnout gear. I think it's like a five, I mean, there's a certain amount of warranty to it. Right. Um, and so I think 19 is actually the year that it's due to be, they're due to be replaced. So I don't think it's actually based on that, uh, based on the logo or anything like that. It's more about um, the turnout gear itself, even if it's not used, um, yeah. it has a certain shelf life that, um, that, you know, that you're allowed to keep it and then sort of you're supposed to replace it and cycle it out. And, and that is the year that the chief requested it in. Okay. Exactly. So that was the year that they requested it in. So they have their own internal schedule about when these things are due for replacement. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it's driven by that. Yeah. Uh, I think from capital improvements, they say they have like a five-year life or something like something that. Something like that. These yeah. are the these are the heavy. Right. This is the heavy safety gear they wear when they're battling a fire. Yeah. You know, to, 
the, the heavy gear. But I would assume some of it gets damaged at times. And then it gets damaged. It's folded. It's washed. It's you know they practice with it. They train with it. Right. Um, so, uh, but I think there's just some part of it that just breaks down over time um, that you're and you're supposed to discard it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just a question: Wouldn't that be a likely target for OM? I mean, I, they you know, they wear them all the time. It's yeah. part of their. I think you can't go to work without it. So you figured they'd get it in their yeah. regular budget sooner or later. I, I, there, that's true. The only problem is, is that it's not really a recurring, um, you know, it's not really a recurring expense every year. It tends to happen like every five years. So that's the mm -hmm. only difference with it. Whereas we are regularly buying two to three cruisers every year. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the main difference with it. Uh, and it's cheaper to per, like do a bulk purchase yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah, buy the whole department one. Right. And also right. just to track like who's got the, you know, who, when was yours replaced, when was yours, you know, to just sort of track it for the whole warranty purpose. Mm -hmm. So that is those, a slight distinction about, about those. Mm -hmm. um, I think the same goes for their, their scuba apparatus. The, their breathing apparatus. The breathing, breathing on scuba. But, right. SCBA, not underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Self-contained uh, breathing apparatus without the underwater part. Yeah. All right, other questions? No, I think you did a good job. We don't have too many questions here. So. And then the only other thing is, um, you know, uh, if you have, um, you know, it's online. It's on. It's in a PDF version online. People can actually read it on the website and. Um, and if you have questions between now and, and um, your first reading on it, you know, please let us know. Email us, call us, you know, contact Susan about it. And if members of the public have questions, they can obviously contact us as well. Again, it's a program. It's a it's an ever changing document. Um, and uh, we, you know, obviously it's probably a good indicator of of the types of projects that we'll bring forward in FY 2016 budget. But even then, we're being asked to make these predictions in March. And this March, we hadn't even seen the governor's budget. We had to turn it in before we even seen the governor's budget. So depending on funding, that could impact you know, the actual projects we're able to bring forward in 16. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, there's no, you know, no commitment to it. So, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming, of course, that if something catastrophic were to happen and resources had to be shifted to deal with that, then this plan would get reshuffled as a result of Oh, of course. And, and obviously projects may intervene in the intervening time that we may have to address that, that um, you know, like, for example, the LED thing kind of broke after the capital improvement process had ended, uh, but we still wanted to get it into the capital program mm -hmm. because of the favorable, um, because of the favorable rates that we received on, on mm -hmm. the new tariffs. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. Third call for more comments. Everybody's Good with where we are. Then a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All right. And uh, this is something that we're doing in conformance to the charter. So I don't think we actually have the vote to do anything with this. It's not like we got to recommend it to council. We, we this is just a form for the public hearing, so we don't have any votes to take on this. And it'll show up in the April second. Agenda. I there'll be a resolution in First. your packet about yeah. adopting the program. And then again, several of the items you're going to want to fast track for the bonding from the capital plan, but not the whole capital plan. Exactly. So those will be done. Yeah. All right. Very good. Then uh, I think we're done. A motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. Well.